Hello, well, welcome and thank you so, so much for joining me for this DSA roundtable discussion. And we've got a great topic ahead. Um, but before I introduce the topic, I'd love to introduce my panel for today. So I am thrilled to be joined by Clinton Sellers from New Gen Direct. Give us a wave, Clinton. Yay! Hello, hello. <laughs> Gabby Barrick from Sunriser. Give us a wave. Yay! Hi. And and Ros Simmons from Monate. So thank you all so much for joining me. So we've done a couple of these and they're always so fascinating to hear how everyone, you know, what they're, what everyone's up to. But I think the thing I love about this sector as more than anything is that we give advice and we share what we learn and everybody learns from that. And I think that's, that's incredible. And one of the fascinating things I think at the moment is how people have changed, how they interact with direct sales and direct selling as a whole. And, I, and you know, we're gonna cover that. So the topic for this, discussion this month is the reasons why people start their direct selling business and how have that how has that changed over time and I think you know I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again when we went into lockdown I feared for this sector mm -hmm. because that that awful feeling that actually we are social sellers and if you take away the social aspect of it how will we survive but this sector rose up but they you know they said we, we were entrepreneurial they were absolutely amazing and we've seen you know so most companies have seen double digits. Some companies have seen treble digit growth, which is incredible. What I do really, what I find fascinating is actually, I think, take it back two years. In my humble opinion, most people joined as a, a kind of a side hustle, a bit of extra money, um, some way of earning things. But having seen from a sector perspective now, we're seeing more and more people set their careers up. You know, this virtual way of working is very acceptable. Um, people suddenly feel that they don't want to go back to nine to five, Monday to Friday, and that they need that more, you know, transient, more um, more lucid way of working. So I think for this sector, we've got, you know, we're going to have some very, very exciting times ahead. But I'd love to know from your individual businesses if you share what we see kind of holistically or whether actually you're just a little bit more um a little bit more into uh, you know into the nitty-gritty of what you see so Clinton if I can come to you first um Absolutely. tell me what uh, yeah tell me what's been happening at you Jen a lot um I mean I, I think what you just said is that we've been our industry has been the saving grace for so many people in the last year mm -hmm. Um, we had a massive change in our business in 2018. It was it was huge. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that in a second. And then again, last year, we saw a huge shift on how important our industry is and why people were joining us. Um, just out of interest, I did a, a quick survey over the weekend and actually asked our distributor base the reasons why they joined. And um, the we, we make uh, health products and well-being products. So it's no surprise the top responses were to help people's health, help other people's health. And then it was followed by earn extra money to boost income, start a business with integrity, um, uh, people who saw results as a customer decided to come in to earn a residual income to have instant daily pay. So those uh, kind of responses, a lot of those were what I would expect, or would have expected many years ago. Uh, I've been in this year for 32 years, so a lot of those core reasons have been around for a long, long time. I asked them um, also, second question, what's the main reasons why people start uh, building a team in your business? The number one response was to earn extra money. Um, and then we asked the third question, which was how our business has changed over time. Has it changed during the pandemic and et cetera? So, um, so a lot of those responses were very much what we would expect. But in 2018, something significant happened to us. And that is um, we came across a team who uh, brought us on the social media front. And because of that, uh, a lot of the things that I was used to in business with, for 32 years changed significantly overnight. I learned more in the following year than I probably had learned for many years uh, from, from these incredible dynamic people, a lot of them in their 20s and early 30s. And, um, and because of what happened, our business um, almost doubled over just a three to four week period. It was absolute, uh, it was almost chaos to a certain degree because it happened so quickly. Um, but because of what happened, uh, we realized how amazing our industry can be on social media and how powerful it is and what a truly home-based business it is, it, it is. And thank goodness, because in the last year, so many people were able to carry on and not just carry on, but to grow and also to give other people uh, security as well. Uh, we had a whole host of people contact us uh, last year, and I'm sure um, everyone else on here had the same. 
um, saying thank goodness um, for your business. We were able to pay bills that they didn't know how they would have been able to do otherwise. When their friends were finding, you know, great difficulty, they were able to, you know, of, offer a solution to people who may not have, you know, previously considered having a business in our industry before. So it's put us on the map in so many ways. This is a career of security that people would possibly never have considered. The side hustle, like, uh, like you said, Suzanne, at the beginning, that's what a lot of people saw early on. But now it's changed massively throughout the world. People are seeing our industry can bring not just more money than conventional jobs, um, but also the security, even at times of difficulty. So it's been a, a massive, massive change for us and the types of people that we're attracting, the demographics changed. And what's been more exciting or just as exciting is seeing the people who are with us who weren't in social media, who've actually taken the, uh, the challenge to learn, and they've mm -hmm. also been able to, uh, to, to do the same thing as well. Uh, so these youngsters who've come in in their twenties and thirties, they've taught us all everything, and uh, and they've been, you know, they've helped so many people along the way. It's brilliant, isn't it? And uh, thank you, thank you so much, because I think the fascinating thing about this sector is, is there aren't glass ceilings. Like there is no way, you know, if you're 20 and you are passionate and you are, you know, you are tenacious about what you want to do, nobody's going to say, oh, that promotion's too soon for you. You just work your way up. And I love that because if you push yeah. yourself, you have that opportunity. And as you say, there's so many 20 somethings now leaving university thinking, what do I do? Yes. I mean, not having the funding to start their own business or a massive franchise, but this just gives that huge opportunity to doesn't it to be able to do it but I can only imagine how chaotic it must have been to almost double your business in in under two months must have just been mind-blowing I, I was gonna say that's one of those things you enjoy looking back on but don't want yes. to get there at the time <laughs> exactly and we were on a young business we had one product at the time we were out to stop for three months because of what happened with that incredible growth. And um, and they just kept on growing anyway. You know, they just kept on uh, putting the message out there. So when we were back in stock, it just all went crazy again. So it was amazing. And the community has been so important for people as well. So many people who've been affected with mental health over the last year, um, you know, they've told us time and time again how important it was to be part of the community. Zooms like this, uh, you know, when we do this each week with our, with our team, how important it is that people get together, we have a bit of fun and, um, you know, and we're in this together and, and they're not isolated. So this industry has done so, so much for so many people. Brilliant. Thank you, Clinton. Thank you. So, Gabby, what's been happening at Sunrider? Well, I could probably echo what Clinton was just saying, because uh, our business is a wellness supplement and nutritional um, business and everything is very green, very chemical free. So um, going back probably to 2018, where things were were going really well and people were focused on more green, on more um, clean eating and wellness and mindfulness and all this, you know, during the pandemic that has actually accelerated. And when I look at the continent where Germany and Austria were much more in the forefront of this clean, green, you know, let's let's look at not using any toxins or chemicals. Actually, the UK has really come along massively in the last 18 months, I would say, you know, um, we've seen a massive influx on people not just wanting to join the industry for the money side, but actually for me, the pandemic um, dare I say it, actually aided from the, from the supplement and the herbal side massively because people wanted to put something in their body that actually did do what it said on the tin um, that was effective after a while and was working in sync with your body. And we've seen such an influx of youngsters, especially, um, you know, coming on board um, that wanted to, to be healthy, but actually then made it into a business opportunity. And again, going back to, to um, university leavers, we had that last year where we had a few, you know, that were eating our products already and knew the benefits and then didn't know what to do in terms of career-wise and then joined the business just on a, on a whim to just, you know, oh, well, I'll do this until I find my way. And now they're fully engrossed and have built up their own, um, you know, production really, if you want. So um, social media definitely was a big change for us, even though we were, we were coming along nicely and um, the pandemic has accelerated that because for us it was very much 
you know, let's get together, let's try, let's touch, let's taste the product. And all of a sudden we were reliant on a screen. But honestly, what we found is exactly what Clinton said. In terms from the mental um, health side, this being together and not being isolated massively, massively helped our community and people just embraced it. And what I'm seeing is a huge influx of the younger generations now, not just on that green route, but actually on that social media side where they say, do you know what, I can do this business because I don't need to go somewhere. I can run this like I would maybe a shop, you know, online. And um, yeah, it's done us the world of good. We had, we had similar issues um, like Clinton with running out of stock um, because especially March last year, I mean, we, we just, it went crazy. Uh, March, April was crazy for us. And um, so it took a few weeks to restock and what have you. But um, yeah, I do feel, you know, apart from the aspect of, yeah, let's, let's have a side hustle. This is really becoming a career focus um, where people see the meaning in, in uh, not just selling something, but what they really believe in. And that gives them a benefit personally and to their, to their social circle. So um, I do believe our industry has got a lot to offer apart from the other in industries out there and it is massively growing. So watch this space. That's, I would say, you know, it's, we're not, we're not going to stop. This is just going to roll on and on. So I'm excited. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. And as you say, you touched on that, which I think is really, really interesting is actually we've created almost um, mini influence, mm -hmm. haven't we, of the social yes. media platforms. Yeah. Where I think that's fascinating is influencers used to be paid for, but you'll never get a better influencer than someone who actually genuinely uses and loves your products. So then if you can go on and sell those, it's almost not like selling, it's just Absolutely. sharing how much you well, enjoy it, how much you like it. And I for me that's where this sector is amazing. You use the products yourself, you like them, go tell other people about them. Absolutely. Is it just a natural progression of influencing without Jeez. having to be, you know, having to be a, a sponsor of an event? Well, one thing I forgot to say is we introduced um, skincare sessions because we do clean, green beauty. Uh, we introduced Wellness Wednesdays, funnily enough, Clinton. So we, we talk about, we go on our social media sites and we talk about mental health and well-being and mindfulness and the things you can do. And it's not product related. If, if you have the product, you, you might fuse it in, but it's mainly... A discussion and then you get some experts on it and then we do fitness fridays which uh, last friday we did a it actually exploded into a global session with 56 countries which was rather hilarious so uh, you know it really has built not just you know from our europe business it has gone across the borders and it, it is engaging people and as you said susanna yeah you don't need i don't want to say you don't need the influencers anymore but everybody's becoming a little mini influencer now in their own right you know by doing the things that they actually believe in and are passionate about and i think that's what it's all about Brilliant, brilliant. Gabby, thank you so much. So, Roz, tell us, tell us what's been happening at the wonderful world of Monate. Well, um, gosh, very similar in terms of growth to, to Gabby and Clinton. Um, I think probably one of the main differences is we went into the pandemic already a social selling company. You know, that has always been our big focus. Um, so we were sort of set up already. We had a huge advantage because it just meant that we could... We, we just sort of carried on and escalated, did Zooms to death, as we all did. Um, but at the same time, we brought in, um, we brought in different people. Um, we brought in a lot of hairdressers, a lot of beauty therapists who clearly couldn't work. And what I'm so delighted about is many of them have stayed. That obviously they can go back to their careers, but they have realized they can earn a significant amount of money um, in our wonderful industry. And Susanna, as you said, there are no glass ceilings for, for mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, I, I asked my team, similar to you, Clinton, in terms of, you know, what are the main reasons why people join? And some of the reasons are having a business without a boss is definitely really, really important. Um, and having an online business where you can work from anywhere. Um, it's that I think that is quite a significant one, particularly for ambitious millennials who really do want to travel. They want to travel. They don't necessarily want to be stuck somewhere mm. in COVID. They want to be able to travel and work from anywhere. And I'm seeing that more and more. But I think in addition, what our industry really does with these incredible, talented, ambitious, ambitious millennials, um, it can be lonely for them. And I think what our company and all our direct selling companies does 
it invokes a sense of community and a sense of belonging. Um, we do, uh, as, as a lot of direct selling companies do, we do a lot of online training, leadership skills, um, really how to manage a team. Because a lot of people suddenly have got a massive downline and they're like, oh my goodness, what mm -hmm. do I do? Because they, they've never had those, you know, life skills taught to them. So that we spend a lot of time and a lot of effort helping them you know, work through people problems, helping them work out, you know, how they're going to structure their businesses as well. So you're right, the industry has changed for the better, um, very social driven, and I think it will continue to be social driven. Um, what has been, it was a real risk for us um, a couple of months ago, um, we announced that we were going to go into Spain and Lithuania. And I have to say, uh, we were all, all the senior management were quite worried about going into a country that we couldn't physically be in. We had great sales directors, but we physically couldn't be in. And all we did were Zooms and, you know, opportunity Zooms every, like almost every day. And we, um, in, in Spain, for example, we had two and a half thousand people join us in month one. That was like three times our forecast in Lithuania almost 500 people joined. And Lithuania mm. is like smaller than Ireland. Mm. So it just shows the opportunity and people are looking for opportunity. And I think companies like ours where we're brave, we're ambitious, we want to go into countries where people are crying out for our products. Mm. Um, that's really important. And I think the final one that wraps it all up is product is key. You know, product mm. is really important. People join because of great products. And I'm, I've, I've always worked in direct selling, but I've also worked in product development. And I'm so proud of our industry that we've all upped the game on the quality of our products. They are comparable and more to what is out there on the high street and in department stores. So yeah, proud to be in this industry and proud to see how our industry is just gonna take the market by storm and continue, particularly in Europe. Absolutely. And Ros, I couldn't agree more. I think the awards that are won by some of the DSA members are phenomenal. You know, up against some of the best makeup brands and the best hair brands, the best healthcare, well, you know, we can often outstrip the market. And I think, you know, we, we probably don't shout about the quality of the products enough. And it's weird that when I talk about direct selling to people, it's always that, you know, all that dark art of what does all that mean? I keep saying it's a direct channel to market. That's all this is. It's a sales channel. It's a retail way of selling. It's just direct to the consumer. And it's as simple as that. You can take out all of the other mumbo jumbo and all of the other bits with it it's just a different way of selling 100 percent right and and actually i often refer to us as a beauty brand first and foremost who just happens to sell in a direct selling environment um it would be amazing on the direct selling website to have all the awards that we've won i mean there's so many pure beauty green awards you name it it would be amazing if we could all pop um the amazing shareables and awards you know that we've what? Won. That's that a brilliant fun. idea. I've written it down. We will we will do that straight away because that's a great idea because it is something we shout about. And we actually have just started looking at the charitable work that goes on as well and culminating mm -hmm. all of that together because, you know, some of the research that we pulled together during lockdown, mm -hmm. um, there were, you know, millions and millions of pounds given from, from the direct oh, selling. From our members. We make such a difference. We, as an mm -hmm. industry, we, we really are a power of good. And, um, you know, every, every direct selling company has its own, charitable gratitude program and um again that's another reason it's a sense of belonging and a sense of community that keeps our industry strong what, where I think it's interesting is all three of you have kind of picked up on that Generation Z because I'm, I'm sadly old enough that in my day, you know, you got to a certain point, you've got a sensible job, you bought a house, you paid your mortgage and you didn't go off traveling. You didn't, you know, you found roots and that's what you did. And then from there, you sold that house and moved up the chain. But actually now house prices are so unachievable. I think Generation Z just know they won't buy, you know, they won't do that. So then they want a job that moves with them. And I mean, this sector is absolutely ripe to help those guys do that, isn't it? And I think the pandemic where you're, trapped in one country and you're away from family but you can still see people and you know the whole mm -hmm. infrastructure that just allows you to move your business with you um I, I think we'll you know we'll just set another trend coming up to keep keep the wave of success
going to. So I'm going to summarise by saying, A, first of all, thank you very, very much indeed. It's always really, really interesting to hear everybody's views. And I especially like it when they're all similar, because it just shows that, you know, the sector does move in one way and it's, uh, it's just, just selling different excellent products. But what I love as well is I've yet to do a round table where three words don't come up. And those three words are always, we always provide training. We always give support, but most of all, the one word that's echoed over and over and over again is community. Yeah. And I love that from both from both from the DSA and their members being a community to the, you know, the, the members, uh, consultants being communities to you guys all being a community. It just feels like, it's, um, you know, it's an incredible place to be in. So thank you very, very much indeed. It's fascinating to talk to you all. I'm hoping very soon we'll be able to actually get into a room and do this face to face and uh, we'll certainly be having some awards. So the DSA are actually going to do some awards coming up um, just to celebrate the consultants and the biggest achievements in oh. lockdown. So watch out for that announcement coming soon. But we really think we should recognise the consultants that have gone above and beond in this difficult yeah. period of time. Absolutely. So we should uh, Amazing. We'll be that soon. But yeah, thank you very Amazing. much. Panel. You've been amazing. And I will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.